This video is going to cover one of the two lesson planning questions that you get on uh, Rika. If I can just bring this into your window so that you can see this, remember uh, the first two essays don't count for very much, but certainly uh, C and D count for quite a bit. And one area is going to be word analysis, the other one would be comprehension. I'll do that in a separate video. And what you're going to see is that in the word analysis question, we'll be identifying a need, writing a lesson plan, and then stating a justification. You don't necessarily have to do these in uh, paragraphs, but the areas should be distinct uh, because when the when these things are scored, the assessors are going to be looking to see if you can identify a need, <clears throat> write a lesson plan, and provide a justification. So assignment C again is domain two word analysis, and let's see what it is uh, is asking us. Let me just kind of bump this up a little bit. Um, this is all standard uh, test uh, exam fair where they tell you where to write the stuff and they give you the word counts 150 to 300 words. I'd be erring on the side of 300 words. That's what they do. They're writing really close to the limits and in a couple of cases they go over but you can do your own uh, word counts and so forth. But let's just get a sense of what this uh, looks like before we actually read it. And what we see is that they give you stimulus data. That's all of these data right here. Uh, what else do they provide you? They provide you with what the student did. In other words, the teacher had this child read aloud and the child read words and anything with a check mark was correct. Anything with wrong, that was incorrect is written down and then written down phonetically so that you can see what the uh, child actually said. There are many different types of these transcription uh, alphabets. I'm accustomed to a much different one, uh, and we'll wend our way through this. Uh, probably a good idea, of course, to uh, study those, you know, uh, but look through the documentation to see if they're testing you on a specific one. As I said, there are several different marking methods, and I'm most uh, familiar with the, inter the International Phonetic Alphabet, which that is not, but you don't care. What you do care about is what the question says. And this is a standard lesson plan question uh, fodder right here that says, based on your analysis of the assessment, uh, evidence provided, write a response in which you ident identify in item one, one important need demonstrated by the student in the area of word analysis. Describe an instructional strategy or activity. It's a lesson plan to address this need. And then explain why the instructional strategy activity you describe would be effective for this purpose, citing evidence from the student response. So this is important. Look, they want you to be citing evidence. So that's why I'm advocating you do it in like three sections or three paragraphs for the simple reason that the people who are going to read this stuff need to be able to find it quickly in order to give you the points that you need in order to pass. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be looking for a need in the area of word analysis. We'll be looking for a lesson plan that addresses it. And then we're going to provide a, a benefit or a justification. Uh, that's the way I would look at justifications. I would look at them in terms of benefits. Uh, so justification and benefit are synonymous. You could, I could even change this to benefit. But a benefit is a justification. So we can watch me try to spell, do public spelling on uh, on YouTube. But anyway, uh, that's what this essay does. I would divide it up into into three parts and, and do it that way if I were you. Um, there's no guarantee that's going to work, but it has in the past. That's why I suggest it. So let's take a look at the stimulus data and then see uh, how to quickly write this thing up and, and do it. And, and that's uh, something I would do too, is immediately when you're sitting down to do this uh, test, if you get some scratch paper that they allow you to take notes on, uh, do this. If they don't, hopefully uh, the word processor that they provide to you when writing up your essay will enable you to at least you know, write down uh, you know, just some notes where you're going to be sure to identify a, it looks like I'm going to write a different word, let me try that one more time, uh, that you're going to be uh, able to just quickly write out uh, what the outline uh, happens uh, to be. Uh, sorry for the hiccups, I don't know why my mouse is behaving this way, but an outline would just simply be to identify a need, and the second thing would be like a lesson plan, and then the third thing would be a benefit or a justification. I'll be abbreviating arbitrarily, as you see here. And so in looking at um, what this student is able to, to do here, and we take a look at the words, if you notice, it's often helpful just to go through and mark the kinds of words that you're dealing with in here. And unfortunately, my markings are going to disappear, but 
Uh, stretch has got a lot of complicated consonant clusters in here. You know, that's a whole uh, blend. This is a digraph with a T. This makes it a blend. And so you're dealing with a word that's got some com complexity to it. Uh, drape. Drape has uh, got a blend in it right here. Uh, here it looks like a, a silent E is working on that A, making it long. Safety is polysyllabic, so that's what this is. I'll mark that with a P, so it's a polysyllabic word. Begin, that's also polysyllabic. It's also a high-frequency word, in, or a, an irregular high-frequency word, maybe. Or a sight word. Let's just call it a sight word and is just not worry about it. Opposite is just a mess because you got opposite, three syllables that you have to combine. This should be opposite with the silent E, but it isn't because English is crazy. Recess, that is a simple uh, polysyllabic word. You know, very simple, easy to decode. Um, settlement, that's polysyllabic. Deadline, compound word, also polysyllabic. Uh, Influ and you can see the pronunciation is already bad right there disagreement so in polysyllabic words seems to be the problem especially words that maybe have one or more syllable or have some kind of complexity into it because safe safety is how the child pronounced uh, this one you can see it even if you can't <clears throat> read all of the phonetics that are in here and you don't get it perfectly you get the little schwa symbol in there that's uh, safety is how he's or she is pronouncing it Oposite, uh, it looks like how that's that was pronounced. Uh, set lament, there's even an, uh, the accent is here, so it's set lament. Influnct, instead of influenced for this one, or einflunct, influnct. Hard to know exactly how they want these symbols read when they don't tell us <clears throat> which system it is. But we live, we live with ambiguity every day. Uh, disagreement, disagreement, so there's too much syllabication going on, or maybe some syllabication, but just not reassembling uh, them. So if I were going to identify a need in here, clearly polysyllabic words uh, would be the need, and I'd be citing evidence in here of that. They don't ask you for a strength uh, in here. Some versions of the test may, so just be on the lookout for that, and the types of you know, um, strengths you could cite is, look, there are complicated consonant clusters that the student is able to uh, work with, even phonics rules right here that the child can work with, even some simple two-syllable polysyllabic words. It looks like any word really that's got some, uh, you know, looks like derivational affixes in there are an issue, safe to safety, it changes the type of word that we have here. Opposite, I'm not seeing much by way of uh, root words, but maybe I'm not looking carefully enough. Uh, but this is definitely a lot of um, uh, looks like uh, derivational suffixes and prefixes are going on in uh, in that one. Uh, so then for the lesson plan, here's where you would want to try to find a lesson that uh, would be useful for this uh, this student, and we'll take a look at what they say is good. And then the last thing you'll see that they do in here is they provide a benefit. That's the third thing. I don't think you'll be able to see it beneath, so I'll write it here, but you have to provide a benny. A benefit of what? Benefit of this lesson for what? A benefit for this problem with polysyllabic words. Or multisyllabic words. Whatever is identified in the test specifications is what you want to say. So again, there's the question. Need, lesson plan, benefit. Very easy. Uh, so let's take a look at what they do first with the need. And that's expressed in uh, paragraph number one. And you can see uh, basically how they uh, express it. It says right here, one need demonstrated by the student is difficulty using structural analysis to decode multisyllabic words. So remember, structural analysis is what you do with words that have a lot of prefixes, suffixes, and roots in them, for example. And that's what they do. They provide an example. So look, they identify the need using structural analysis to decode multisyllabic words. We knew it was a multisyllabic word problem. We knew that it was uh, words that have some derivational affixes in there. For example, the student doesn't seem to recognize roots like safe, settle, agree, and affixes. <clears throat> affixes are just a category, like prefix and suffixes. Ty, ment, and dis, and words that contain multiple morphemes. So the student makes syllable breaks in the middles of morphemes, pronouncing safety as safety, for example. So notice what they have in here. It's 
Uh, not so difficult. It's uh, just a matter of identifying a, a need and writing out as much as you can with strong examples in there. Maybe you could even uh, drop some of the jargon, but why? But I guess you could instead of saying structural analysis and in being able to uh, decode or being able to um, read fluently through multisyllabic words that have prefixes and suffixes in them, for example, and then providing those examples would be a good idea. Let's take a look at this uh, main part, or the next part, rather, of your uh, lesson plan, or of this uh, essay on word analysis, and that's to provide a lesson plan. And you can see that in here. Here's how they do it. One strategy that would help the student would be uh, using instructional or explicit instruction to promote the student's automatic recognition of common affixes. For example, to build automatic recognition of the prefix dis, the teacher should have the student practice reading it in isolation and short lists in which several instances of dis appear with the affix the student has already mastered. So look at this. What's going on in here and in this lesson is exactly what um, I, I'd mentioned earlier. They really like this part to whole instruction. So you end going from the known to the unknown. So if you see this, you're going to focus on something that the child is having difficulty with, like dis, and then working with a known um, affix, or pardon me, using it with a uh, known uh, root word that the student can handle, like disappear or reappear or something like that. But they're really going from uh, for teaching one by one to one um, instruction. So you're not trying to teach re, for example, or un, for example. You're focusing on one prefix and using it with a known uh, with known root words that this is going to to work. Uh, the, the, I'm sorry to be stumbling over my words. But using this prefix with known uh, stems that the uh, child can read. So take a look at this. Next, the student practices reading dis in word reading exercises using short decodable words like dis, like, discard. The teacher gradually introduces increasing complex uh, words in short passages, <clears throat> passage reading exercises containing the target affix. The teacher repeats the strategy to teach other affixes that the student doesn't recognize automatically and to reinforce affixes recently taught by including them among the mastered affixes in the exercise. Another procedure that would work in here, or another lesson plan that would work in here, uh, would be to use word cards where you have dis on a word card and then pairing it with known uh, words like like, dislike, discard, etc. and then making things more uh, more complicated. But you can see that the essay is pretty short. You can do a word count. I think that this approaches uh, 300 words. Um, so you can see that this example is, is showing you what kind of coverage you need to do. Now look at the benefit or the justification. Uh, I use them synonymously. Uh, the strategy would be effective in addressing the student's need because automatic recognition of affixes will help the student decode multisyllabic words that contain multiple morphemes, including helping the student distinguish a word's root. The strategy provides ample practice and reinforcement <clears throat> and reinforcement reading target affixes. Did I read that right? This strategy provides ample practice and reinforcement reading target affixes in increasingly complex texts or contexts. So that's a benefit. If you look at the, how they write up their justification for why this is how they want you to write it, it simply says this assignment assesses one or more competencies in domain two. The response fulfills the purpose of this assignment by accurately identifying a need demonstrated by the student in the <clears throat> in word analysis, describing an, an effective strategy for addressing this need, and explaining why strategies would be why the strategy would be effective. The writer demonstrates an accurate understanding of structural analysis and related terminology, morphemes, and also describes effective procedures for promoting automatic word recognition of a target affix. The offer writers, uh, the <laughs> I got that backwards. The writer offers strong support for the response by providing appropriate, accurate details, and an accurate rationale explaining why the described instructional strategy would be effective. So, <clears throat> it provides examples. It targets the need. This benefit right here addresses the benefit of this lesson plan you see in here, and everything opened up with the need supported by examples. 
So you really can let this thing write itself. If, uh, as I've been mentioning and as I've advocated, uh, look over the descriptions and the technical information for the test so you know what areas of word analysis they'll target, like concepts about uh, print, I think, is in this domain. It may be by itself. In, in, uh, in, no, it is in this domain. So is phonemic awareness or phonics rules. So be sure that you know your way around all of that stuff. And I have all the lectures posted, too, for these areas. So I recommend that you watch that series of videos. Okay, let's go to the next essay.